Hey folks, Sonia here from Ash Design. Today I'm going to show you how to transform your photos using the distort and warp options. So we're going to start with this film strip photo mask that uh, we just came out with new this week. Um, <clears throat> so we've got six photos here that we want to fill in. <clears throat> so we'll start with photo number one. So I'm going to select photo number one right now. And I've got six other images all ready to go here. So we're going to go with our first photo. So I'm just, I've got my pointer tool selected. <clears throat> I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it onto my film strip photo mask. I'm going to drop it in. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to put it in place pretty much where I want it to be. And then I'm going to clip it. So you can either do a right clip, I'm sorry, right click create clipping mask or you can do control alt G on your keyboard I think that would be command option G for a Mac so now that we've got that settled let's come in here and we're going to choose I I'm a big fan of keyboard command so control or command T will bring up your transform um, option here. Now if I right click on it, it'll give me some options. What I want to do is I want to distort this. So we'll choose distort and what distort allows us to do is move any one of these any one of these knobs. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to line up the corners and it's it's going to distort your image. Um, but that's okay. So let's come in and line up those corners. Get the bottom one here. Get that one in there. And now you can see that, you know, we've got some cutoff here and we've got some cutoff, you know, overlapping over there. So this is where the warp comes in. So once again, we're going to right click. We're going to choose warp. And now what you're going to do is you're going to drag the outer corner. So you can see you can see how it's sort of running right along this curve. That's exactly what we want. And same thing with the inner corner. We want to drag that so that it's also sort of running along that curve. Now what happens with the insides, you can see they stay straight. But we want to take the insides and we want to also just have that sort of go right along the same curve. And same with this. And that looks pretty good right about there. Then just hit enter on your keyboard and you can see how he's he's put in there and he sort of just goes right along the curve of that. So that's photo one. Now I'm going to select photo number two. And let's move this up in our canvas and let's see we're done with number one so we can close you. All right player number two. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag it over onto our film strip. We'll let that go. We're going to put him in place where we want him. Now I'm going to hit Command T, but I want to scale this down somewhat because I want to make sure he's sized correctly first. Okay, now we're going to right click, distort, line up the corners. Okay, and once again, this doesn't have as much of a curve, but it's got some, so we're going to right click, warp. We're going to work the outsides first. So that it runs along the curve. And same with this one. Bring that in. And this doesn't need as much, just a little nudge. And hit enter. And there's our second one. All right, now we'll go to our third one. So I'm going to come down uh, and I'm going to choose my third photo. We'll close this one. Okay, here's the third photo. Drag it over to our form strip. Let it go. And let's scale that down somewhat. Okay. And let's clip it. Now we're going to hit Command T again, right click, distort, 
Make the corner. Make the corner. This corner. Now this one, this one doesn't need too awful much warping, but we're going to give it just a nudge to get it out there. All right, coming in the home stretch now, number four. Let's close number three. Here's number four. Drag them over. Lock it in. Okay, he's actually sized pretty good here. So we're going to go ahead and clip that. Control T, bring up your transform. Right click, distort. Make all of your corners. Okay, and this one needs, I would say this doesn't need any just any warp at all. Just a little distortion to fit right in there perfectly. And number five. Okay. Bring that over into our layered film strip. <clears throat> He's also sized pretty good. So we'll group that. I'm sorry, um, clip it. Right click, oops, control T first to bring up the transform. Right click, distort. Now this is actually taking um, the curve in the opposite direction. So we will right click, warp this, and we'll bring it in, and we'll bring that one out. It's slight, but looks pretty good. And now we're down to the last one. We'll close you out, and number six. Okay, so we'll get that in place where we want it, clip it, and transform it, distort, line up your corners. You'll be pros at this on this one template after doing this six times. Okay, and then I click warp. Edge out and then drag this edge in. I mean, this has a good amount, so you can see how we're gonna light, we're gonna arc that as much as that, and same, same with this. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we've got all of them in our film strip. Now I want to show you what I would do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and close out my baseball player over here. So I've got an amped effect that I think would work really well with this. This is Powder Explosion Baseball. And I put one of our uh, guys in here already just to save a little time on this. But um, so I think that this film strip would fit really nicely in here. and I think I'd like it to sort of be the gray, you know, in the letters here. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool, just sample that gray, and I'm going to come back over to my film strip. And what I want to do is I want the film strip itself, this dark gray, I want it to be the gray that I just chose over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the pixels right here. And by doing that, what it does is it it locks all of the anything that is on the layer which is the film strip and that means if I fill it it will still um, retain 
this transparency. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill it with this foreground color. So edit fill, fill it with foreground color, and OK. And that's sort of the light gray there. So at this point, uh, what I would do is I would save this out as a PNG file. Let's see, PNG, oh, film strip. Um, and the reason I'm saving this as a PNG file is because PNGs save with the transparency intact, which means um, you can lay this on top of um, any any layer in any file, and you won't you wouldn't have like a, a flat and a flat like this wouldn't be white like it would with the JPEG. A JPEG would flatten it down, and you'd have white, and you, it would be in a box. This is actually going to allow us to have that film strip pulled in. So let's go see. Let's go find that. Here we go. So I'm going to grab my pointer tool and bring that over into my amped effect. Now this is a pretty large file, so we need to scale this down. So Control T. And let's just Size that to fit. That looks good. Okay, I'll nudge it over just a little bit. And one of the things I like to do is, you know, to add a little interest, is maybe to put a, a drop shadow on this. Um, so here's how I go about that. I would duplicate the layer that we just brought in. This is your film strip. So let's go ahead and duplicate that. Um, I would pull it underneath here. And let's rename this shadow. Now, once again, I would lock the pixels. And I want to fill that uh, with black now. So we're going to do Edit, Fill. And we're going to fill it with black. Choose OK. All right. Now we can unlock the pixels because that is filled. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to distort the shadow. So we're going to do Control T again on the keyboard, right click, distort. And what I want to do is pull this over here, right, so that we can sort of have that, that long shadow there. All right. Now the next thing I would do is come up to my filter and let's put a little blur on that. We'll take the choose the Gaussian blur here. And this is at about 2.6, maybe about 3 would be good. Alright, so so we've got a slight blur there. And the next thing I would do is bring that opacity down to I don't know, maybe 40-ish. Around there is good. And I think for the final touch on this, um, I would add a layer mask. I would grab my gradient tool, and I would make sure that my foreground was black, which it is. And then I would choose my gradient option that is foreground to transparent. And that, that's this one right here. And then with my foreground black and clicking in the mask of the shadow, we're going to drag up so that we can sort of trail off that shadow, just to give it a little interest. And then I think I might just, with the arrow keys on your keyboard, I'm just going to nudge it back this way a little bit. And um, that's it. I think that's a, a nice final piece and a good start for you to learn how to uh, use the distort and warp uh, tools. So thank you for watching, and um, hope this was beneficial for you all.